Kathy Perno. We're going to get punch drunk today. We've got Diego Magdaleno coming in, talking about some boxing. But first, we're going to talk global sports streaming. I'm here with founder Armando Bereno, who is also my good buddy, if you didn't know. <laughs> yes, we are. Let's talk GSS. So Let's where did talk. this idea come from? Uh, shoot, uh, you have to go back a ways. A um, long time. Actually, when you and I first met, um, back when we were doing, what was it, 2005 or six? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we worked for this company, and <laughs> I hired him as my boss because yes, yes. I don't really like bosses. <laughs> <laughs> so I let her do what she wanted. Right. Um, no, but uh, it started back then, and YouTube was Ed was just starting out. And mm -hmm. when I saw YouTube for the first time, I'm like, oh, dude, this is the future. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the future. And then when live streaming came about shortly after that. You said, oh, like, dude, this oh, is the future. This is the future. This, <laughs> this is the television killer. Yeah. Um, and so I've always had it. I was able to explore it when I worked for uh, the boxing company, Top Rank, mm -hmm. and was able to get really deep into it. I mean, we were the first company to launch uh, live streaming in combat sports. Uh, NBC was the first company to actually do sports. Uh, they did the NBC Sunday Night Football game on, mm -hmm. on, on their first stream right. ever. Uh, for sports, and then top rank was number two. For so, sports, yeah. yeah, so I got into it back then, and, and the ideas just grew and grew and grew in my head. And I reached, I felt like I reached the ceiling uh, within the top rank organization. Great people, great company. Um, I just, I just needed to hang out with Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, you know, good, good times. Um, <laughs> but I just needed, to, I, did, I needed to grow. Right. I needed to move on, and and then so GSS came shortly after, mm -hmm. and it's it's morphed into. Like with every with every setback that I have and every every failure that, that, that comes around, new ideas morph out of it. Mm -hmm. So it didn't initially start off the the idea that it is now. I mean, it was always the underlying live streaming uh, right. live streaming sports. Start off in boxing, move into MMA, and then other sports. Um, so that idea was always there, but there's so much more that that has come out of it um, in terms of the process and the people that I want to work with and the relationships that I've formed that I didn't know prior to starting this. And so it's 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 blossomed into uh, a really exciting project mm -hmm. that's going to turn into a, a good venture for investors right. as well as anybody involved in the company. You really are a pioneer on the f forefront of what is happening now. And I want to I almost said TV, but what is happening in video and streaming and the way that we get our entertainment, whether it's yeah. sports or, or a TV show or a movie. But um, I remember back in 2015, tell me about this show called Best in Boxing. You know, like you said, it was always the idea to start in boxing because that's kind of where your background comes from. But um, how did that, where have, we gone, where have we come since Best in Boxing started? Well, first, Best in Boxing, the, the name itself came out of, I mean, who doesn't want to be the best when they're a boxer, right? right? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> it, was, it was an easy name and no one's used it. And, and honestly, it's, 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 it's part of... For me, it means more than just what it says. It means because the entire idea for the show mm -hmm. was to be able to develop talent in a more public way. Right. Uh, and what I mean by that is that prior to this technology coming about, it was way too expensive to to video and transmit all fighters. Right. You know, all the fights that are on the cards, because a lot of people who don't are novice to the sport of boxing, they watch one or two or three fights, sometimes four on a pay per view on television, and that, right. and and not knowing that there, there could be. I mean, PBC had uh, the Mikey Garcia Earl Spence. They had seventeen fights on that card. Wow. It was it was ridiculous. It was a lot of fights. I mean, they they, they packed them in. And those but, can still be good fights. They're just maybe a boxer yeah. you don't know. Yeah. And back in the day, they didn't they didn't broadcast them. Mm -hmm. it just it didn't it didn't. People were de fighters were developed off television, right. and now with the internet, television's expensive. Yeah, exactly. And so with with the internet, now they can be broadcast from the from their first punch all the way through their careers. Now, what have people said to you? What has been kind of the feedback? Because I know that the boxers that maybe weren't getting a lot of attention have yeah. been really grateful to at least get a shot. Yeah, I, I, we have a lot of fighters online that reach out mm -hmm. and they, they want to fight on the cards. Um, I wish we had more cards to give them, and right. we, we eventually will. I mean, there are so many fighters out there who are unsigned, who are hungry, who just want the opportunity for people to be able to check them out. Mm -hmm. That's all they're asking for yeah. is opportunity. They're not, they're not asking for gimmies. And so we're building this, this particular show and, and really, it's for all athletes to come on. And the same thing with MMA, the same, same thing with any of the other sports that we're looking mm -hmm. at. Um, we want to build the individual athlete. We want to be their partner in, in their building because the traditional model in boxing, at least in boxing, is, is that fighters, mm -hmm. um, the, the promoters prevent 
pr uh, promote fighters f per event. So when you're done not fighting, and okay. this is pre-social media. Wait, so, so you say the promoters promote fighters per event. Per event. Got so it. when you're not fighting, they're <laughs> not promoting you. That's your responsibility because they're they're event promoters, not in, not individual athlete promoters. Gotcha. It it's falls on the athlete's shoulders to be able to get their name out there. Okay. Now there are some who are amazing at it. You know, you look at a Floyd Mayweather. I mean, that guy built uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars because he knew what to do outside the ring. Yes. Right. And so the branding. fighters. It's they, branding. It's branding. And all fighters don't have that ability, and especially fighters that aren't signed. Well. I can help them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm certainly not going to do it all for them because they need right. to take responsibility to help build their own brands. But if any tools that I can offer them mm -hmm. in terms of broadcasting them when we do, when they do fight, that we're able to give them a little coverage, little stories behind them to tell a little bit about who they are to the public. Because essentially, they have a very small window in order to make themselves known to the public to be able to turn what they love into money. Yeah, just like any professional athlete, you do have that little window. I mean, you and I are not in our fighting age. <laughs> anyway, we were just talking about that off camera a little bit. But what about challenges? Because I remember when you first did your very first broadcast down in Mexico, there wasn't enough bandwidth, and then it was going well, and then it would go down, and it would go well, and it was go down. So there have been challenges. That, that was the first. Tran <laughs> that was the first transmission. Yeah. Right. Um, but no, the actual first fight that we attempted. Uh -huh. That was a nightmare, and and this just goes to, this just goes to a lot of, I've had a lot of unlucky things happen, and and it's just <laughs> there are lessons. Of, yes, there were lessons. A lot of lessons <laughs> and a lot of failures. I mean, well, that's one of the things. Like, mm -hmm. you look at you look at uh, if you watch any you know YouTube video on inspirational men or women, right. it's, they're always talking in the past tense because they're billionaires and people reach out and respect that, right? And so they want to know how they built. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not a billionaire and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in, I'm in the midst, midst of starting this thing. Right. And so I'm sitting here trying to chronicle it. I've decided to chronicle it and let people know what's going on because right. it's, it's not, it, it is, it is the most difficult thing I've ever done. Um, it has completely changed who I am in terms of my patterns and, and my ability as a, as a leader in that every failure that I've had to take on my shoulders is magnitude. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, a, it's much different than if I'm working for somebody. I mean, this is me. It's on my shoulders. It's my responsibility right. in order to deliver. But it's and, a lesson. you got to go through it. Yeah. And so to get back to how we started, mm -hmm. um, hired an American crew, all the people that I knew from the boxing world uh, came out to help, took them, uh, we went down to the border, got all the paperwork, pro a lot of people may not know that in order to take professional equipment and back and forth across the border, you need paperwork to For verify. video equipment and Yeah, audio to verify equipment. that you own it, that you're not buying it down there and bringing it back cheap. Okay. Um, and so we did all that, did everything properly, um, and we got down there and the agent, uh, the border agent signed in the wrong place. So went across the border with the gear in Mexico, they have to, process all the same paperwork and and so because he signed in the wrong place because it wasn't the typical customs guy long story short they circled around about four times then they got flagged because if you come across the border four times then you're flagged then you have to go to the secondary and then by the time they got out of they just shut it down oh by the time they got out of secondary the fights were like an hour in i mean it was it was so we didn't even set up i mean it was that it was that's how bad it was, I mean, it was oh yeah so so that was lesson number one um, of, of many. That yes, was just yes. that was I just love that we're calling them lessons. That yes. That was just the lessons. start. Um, so yeah, I've had just about every major catastrophe that can happen, including like one of my partners. Like, so my first partner, mm -hmm. uh, it, it got a little, it, he's nothing against him, a family man, mm -hmm. you know, had to take care of his family, had to feed his family. And this is, this is. This is not easy living. Yeah, and no. when you have when you have kids, you got to be able to. I almost them. gave a Gary V quote right there, but you told me I can't swear. So, <laughs> you know, when you're starting a business, you gotta let's just eat some humble pie. That is not how Gary V would say it. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> I'm doing that right and now. And not actual and, pie and because I continue to do that. <laughs> <laughs> some people need to make money. Yeah, and some some people are like me and just keep on throwing money at something. Uh, <laughs> but it's going places and it's picking up. No, so where are we now with GSS? Um, okay, so so basically, we're in the process of, of, of financing right now. Mm -hmm. um, there was a there was a there's a few things that had to happen along the way. One to to uh, to 
lay the foundation for the actual ideas mm -hmm. uh, and then work out those ideas and that takes time to be able to do to be able to to script it all out and 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 create pitch decks and do all, yes. the, all the stuff that is necessary in order yeah, to guys he has lots of ideas we just can't talk about them because all of you can't sign an nda yeah. non-disclosure agreement so <laughs> so you have to work out all these ideas he makes for the me investors. sign them by the way <laughs> <laughs> just just saying yeah well there's some cool ideas they are really cool um but no, the the the, the ideas um, have to be laid out, mm -hmm. and so that's what I've been that's what I'm I've worked on, and now I'm in the process of finding that finding the money in order to finance it. Look, the ideas that I have are big. I mean, where I want to take this is massive, um, and in order to do that, I need financing. It's not something that I can do alone. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is that financing is very difficult to get. Right. It's it's you know the majority of people who who do get financed for mm -hmm. startups, they're being financed by relatives. I mean, most, that's the way right. it goes. It's, you're, not, you're not going to some foundation or you're not going to some I know, we don't have rich tank. parents. No. Ah. Oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> Missed the boat on that one. Yeah, it happens, yeah. Well, then it's... if you are kind of eating some humble pie and you are, you know, you're building this slowly, which I do see progress, which is very exciting, you know, not only, you know, sitting here with you now, but as your friend, what keeps driving you? Wow. Um... There's there's multiple things that drive me. I think um, my uh, my necessity for change. I've never been a I've never been a follower, um, I, or I have trouble following. Put it that yeah. way. And so my ideas have always been my freedom. And so mm -hmm. it's like if I am executing on my ideas and they're big, they're yeah. big ideas, and they require they require not only a lot of financing, but they also require a lot of people, a lot of people to help. And mm -hmm. so there's that drive in that. I have so many people that I've met, amazing people that I want to work with. Yeah. Like my dream is to have an office full of people that I love working with. Like how? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I keep bugging him. Come on, <laughs> I need a job here. Let's make some money. There are so there are so many people that I've met over the years who are just amazing people that I want around me all right. the time. Like yeah. I want to surround. I want to build a company of a bunch of amazing people, and I know them. Like yeah. I've, of all the you know thousands of people that I've met throughout my life, right. there's certain people that just pop out that that we align and we want to do stuff together, but it's a matter of financing. It's like everybody's got to eat. Yeah. And so how do I create a business to help everybody eat? It's funny that you say that because oftentimes when I talk to boxers or you know you hear people talk about the family, it really mm -hmm. is a family, and it sounds like you're bringing that kind of boxing family feel mm -hmm. into your business, or at least you want to. Yeah, I, I learned that, honestly. I, I learned it from top rank, um, being on the road all mm -hmm. the time with everybody. We were all so close. I mean, we fought like family. Right. Um, <laughs> Put it, put it, to, to put That's it TV if you don't know. <laughs> um, no, no, no. But but there was a lot of there's extremely uh, there was a lot of beautiful people there that mm -hmm. I love that I would love to work with again. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a matter of getting the finances to get them all in the same right. building. So know? he hasn't forgotten about you. No, if he so, loves you. <laughs> and 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 then my own family drives me. I mean, there's a. Uh, there's something to be said about um, producing a, a, a chain of, of successful people and being able to say, hey, look, I, I've got to, I don't have any kids of my own, but I have, mm -hmm. I have nephews and nieces, and to be able to, 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 to let them see that, hey, there's somebody in your family that's fighting, and, and if I'm able to get to the levels that I'm able to get mm -hmm. to, to be able to help them out yeah. and maybe you know, put them, put them, set them up. You know, not that they're not capable of mm -hmm. doing that on my own, but that, that's always something you don't want to, you want to help out your family, the next generation coming up. So that does motivate me. And then my past also motivates me. My, um, I, I recently learned through my cousin, who's, he's actually my second cousin. He's, mm -hmm. He grew up with my father, 75 years old. Wow. He, he lived with uh, my grandfather when my grandfather left my grandmother. And um, my grandfather was an amazing ball player. Um, I'm talking- What kind of ball? Uh, um, excuse me, baseball. Baseball, got it. From that generation, yes. obviously. Well, <laughs> Um, so yeah, he's an amazing baseball player. Um, he uh, could have easily played in the pros. He was actually scouted for the pros. Mm -hmm. The only problem was he wasn't white. Mm. And so a lot of people don't realize is that you know when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, he didn't just break it for black people. Mm -hmm. He broke it for everyone that wasn't white. Yeah. And so my uh, my grandfather, um, his side was from Spain, and so he looked white. He had light skin. He had blue eyes. He could pass as white. Was his last name Barreno? It was. Um, I guess that's a problem back then. A big problem. <laughs> and so they said, look, we want you to come play with mm -hmm. us. Um, you just have to change your name. Oh, seriously? I was joking no, about that. No, no. Oh. No, that was, that's, that's how it was back then. And so he refused. Good for him. He refused. He refused to change his name. I mean, if he did, 
Um, I'm sure no one would have blamed him, but I, my last name would not be <laughs> Baeno. It would be something else. Um, and so he he didn't he didn't play in the majors. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he he see back in San Diego where he was from. Um, he played like Jackie Rob. They played with Jackie Robinson. Yeah. You, you know, Ted Williams played with him on this. I mean, these guys. Like, he played with Hall of Fame guys, and he was at their level. Out at the park. But you know? he couldn't <laughs> play in the majors. So when finally the majors came, uh, when it was opened up, mm-hmm. he he had um, he couldn't play ball anymore because right. back in the day, you know, those old crank yeah. engines that they had to start. They didn't have ignitions, right? They had mm-hmm. to turn it. Well, he was doing that, and he got his arm caught, and he broke it. <gasps> oh, and no. In a second, his career was done. Wow. Um, and that was it. That was it for him. Um, and so um, that destroyed him. Yeah. Uh, it. He was an alcoholic. He was abusive. Uh, he left my grandmother. He was a, he was a woman. Right? It, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong in his Trying life. Trying to fill that void with something. Yeah, I mean, he, that he lived. that's all he lived for was baseball. And then mm-hmm. it was not only could he not play it mm-hmm. at the pro levels because he wasn't white, he also couldn't play because he busted his arm. And to think about like how much that must, um, like just think about this. If you were offered yeah. to play ball and you said yes, you just had to change your name and say he did, uh-huh. he would have gone on to, 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 to live a much different life and probably never would have been cranking that right. engine. Right. Yet, so for him standing his ground and his beliefs, that happened. Right. And he didn't overcome it, right? He didn't overcome it. He he died tragically, unfortunately. Um, uh, and I say tragically in that my, when my grandmother passed away, he had left her mm-hmm. um, years before, but that was the only woman he ever loved. And when she passed away, he passed away shortly after. Right, like the uh, notebook. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so the, the, the reason I'm saying this is that I look to the past and, and the failures of the past generation. Mm-hmm. And that pushes me and that inspires me to, to be able to keep um, to be able to keep going for the next generation because right. there's so many things that I don't even know that I'll accomplish yet or, or thing, examples that I'll set for, for, the, for the next generation that I, I don't even know what those will be yet. But right. if I continue on a positive path, if I continue pushing forward, at least they'll have those lessons versus you know a tragedy like, like my grandfather. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, I mean, I feel like genetically we have the same, the, the same in us, the same abilities, the same um, possible, you know, we don't know how much of our, of our personalities come from our past, right? Come from right. Our, our genetically. And so how much of him is in me and I refuse to, to, to fall like he did. You know? gotcha. And so that, that motivates me, that, that drives me. When I heard that, I was, first of all, I was touched. It was, it was a very sad story. But at the same time, it's like, how do I flip it? How do I flip it and make it into something uh, in, in something positive and I've used that as times have gotten mm-hmm. tough building this company because it, 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 it is definitely not easy. No, yeah. it has not been. I, I know you as you've been going through this and I've been cheering for you yeah. and for everybody who doesn't know, you know, it's like, why, you know, come on, wh- where's your company? But there's yeah. so many little steps that go into it and so many little setbacks and then you step again. But the thing is, like you said, you just keep going, which is great. So not only readjusting the past, like you said, but now you're giving chances to, at least right now, boxers who may not have another shot to really get themselves out there. So it's kind of twofold there. But why why come on camera and, and talk about it? What do you Why do you think that's important? Put your face out there. Because he's usually behind the camera. <laughs> for like This is the first time I've ever actually seen him on camera, I've been on camera a lot of times with him behind it. Yeah, but so yeah. why now? Why are you putting your pretty little face out there? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I it, it, it took a lot, honestly, to mm-hmm. be sitting in this seat. Um, <laughs> and I've done it. I've done it a few times lately. And this very first time, you you could search back my entire life, and you do not. I know, seriously, find, he's always behind the you camera. Never find video of mm-hmm. me. And so honestly, it, it, I have to do it in order to build this company. Mm-hmm. Like. It, it's one thing to be able to have a business plan, take it and and pitch it all the time, but it's another thing to put a face to the company mm-hmm. because what I've realized in in this in this whole process of learning how to do this is that ideas come and go. It's the individuals who lead these companies, who start these companies that, that, that investors are investing in. Right. You know, you're not investing in Apple because Apple's starting a computer company. You're investing in Apple because Steve Jobs is running Apple. Mm-hmm. And I'm not certainly not comparing myself to him at all, but it's just an example of 
people need to know the the potential investors need to know that I'm putting my face that I'm th that this isn't just a fly by night operation right. that this isn't just this isn't some some idiot that's just coming and don't don't get me wrong I've done a lot of stupid things to get this company off the ground but um, right. this is not an idiot I've, I've done this before right. I mean top rank has made millions but your risks are calculated and that's the thing you're willing to take the risk you're willing to put yourself out there yeah. and you're willing to, to put your face out there and, and, yeah. and I love that about you because it, you're right it doesn't matter if you have the best idea in the world if it's your first idea you're yeah. still a risk yeah. you know to, to potential investors and once you get that off the ground they say hey yeah. this guy's really doing something you know GSS is really doing something special which I really think it is I wish I could tell you all the ideas I can't have electronic NDOs, <laughs> NDAs for all of you watching right now. So there are some great things. And content, you mentioned, you'll never find a video or a photo even really of you out no. on social media until lately. I almost fell off my chair. I, I saw know. you on Instagram talk and I was, was like, hard. what is he that doing? That what is he doing? Uh, so I've content now. I've been practicing in the car as we drive down to um, San Diego for the fights or yeah. Tijuana for the fights. Uh, there's one of my good friends, Aldo, he goes down with me all the mm -hmm. time and he... I've, we've done it multiple trips. That's the first time I posted it. Wow. Because it just, it's never right. And I'm like, fuck it. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Excuse my, my language. I just it's don't, the internet. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I just, I don't care anymore. Right. Like, I, it's all about building this this company. I, 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 I came off, I'm coming off of a low in terms of where I was at mm -hmm. and what I wanted to do with this company. And now I've gotten to the point where I honestly don't give it. I you care so much about the company, but you don't really care. I don't if care you what look people think. No, I just don't care what people think of me anymore. Right. I just, I, I'm. That's beneath what my goal is, mm -hmm. and my goal is massive. And in order to do massive, mm -hmm. I have to put myself out there and be. I mean. I don't want to say massive, but <laughs> well, everybody to, to thought all the good inventors were crazy until they did it. They always tell you oh, that it can't be done until you do it. If I tell you know, tell everyone the full idea. Yes. Some people are like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that is their the, silence is. is that's so one of the st necessary steps for greatness is yeah. to not care what people think because once you stop caring, you know, fear predicated by by judgment. Gary Vee says it all the time. Fear is predicated by judgment. So if yeah. you're worried about what people are thinking of you or that your idea is stupid or it's too big or you can't do it, that's where the problem is. And you're never great until someone tells you you can't do it and then yeah. you do it and you're doing it. That's why it's so exciting. Yeah. Whether it is putting your little face out there on Instagram, which made me almost you know, <laughs> fall out of my chair. Or, I've done it a couple times. I know, I, know, I can't believe it. I'm like, now. what is he talking about right now? <laughs> so it's, that's the thing. It's like not just your content, but with, this is our very first podcast yeah. too. So we're creating more content, getting it out there, getting the idea and the concept out there because the world is changing. Both of us started in television, TV yeah. production. That's why we know each other. And our industry, our world is completely flipped up, upside down. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not one of the innovators, you're going to be left behind. So I'm really excited for you. And I'm excited that we're doing this podcast. And, you know, I'm excited for what's to come. Because like you said, YouTube came out. A lot of news anchors, like I come from a lifestyle TV and news anchors, we were all like, oh, no, our job's are going to be gone and they are yeah. going to be gone but you saw it a different way you're like hey how can i get on this what can i do how can i change oh this with is it? this is the uh, this is the future of, of entertainment i mean if you look back at what television did to radio it was revolutionary oh, I mean, yeah. at the time the the fact that people could transmit images across a, uh, across an electrical line mm -hmm. and receive you know the beatles in the, in their house yeah. or watch the the moon landing that was that was something that you know, you only dreamed about 10 years earlier. Right. The, the, like science, it was something of science fiction. And now with the, with the ability to where, when I first started GSS, and this wasn't that long ago, mm -hmm. right? When I first started, I had to explain live streaming to investors, to potential investors. What is live streaming? Because it, that wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. That was like 2015. Yet, it, yeah, it wasn't yet uh, a, a daily. We were still worried about having enough broadband and yeah. spectrum and... Yeah. All and they, that they stuff. had to perfect it. Yeah, there was there was a twofold. There was a the technology side, being able to distribute it, as well as yeah, before G, uh, three, uh, uh, four G came in, uh, in into being, you couldn't transmit video. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, but it was very it was poorly transmittable. And now on on the creative side, so you have all this technology that came in. Now you have all this creative that's just flooding the market to where I mean, we're we're producing amazing amounts of data mm -hmm. every single day, video where. I mean, how many times a day do you post? 
Right. Know, how many tons of video? Well, you're ever? producing tons of video but <laughs> and content, but people are consuming yeah. tons and tons of content, particularly the younger generations. Yeah, they, they, they want to watch it. I mean, I, I've mm -hmm. said this in, for, since day one. They want to watch it when they want to watch it, where mm -hmm. they want to watch it, and what they want to watch it. So the world is a changing, and you, my friend, are leading the way, and this is very exciting. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm well, so well, proud well, of you. Yeah, you'll all get there eventually. Well, it's, I mean, <laughs> so what? So it's not a multi-million dollar company right now, but how brave is it? Like, just your bravery alone that you've stepped out and you put yourself out there, yeah. and you really, like you said, you've fallen quite a few times, just like any good businessman or any innovator has fallen. You usually don't hear about those stories. Yeah. You always just hear about the successes, but you know, you've gotten back up, you've gotten back up and it's just like a boxer in the ring. Yeah. You know, you got to get back up. You got to get back up Yeah, and you're and doing that's, it. That's exactly what I've been He's doing. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had to learn a whole new skill set. Like the, the person I was four years ago, mm -hmm. um, a little over, yeah, what, a little almost ish. four years-ish. Yeah. Um, the person that I was back then, I am not now. I couldn't have been a CEO uh, of a company or lead a company. Um, like well, I obviously thought you thought had, you could have because well, you started it. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't you don't know what you don't know, right? And right. so I jumped into it. But what the point is that the failures have made me better mm -hmm. at what I am doing, and, and they've made me stronger at, at this whole entire process. So, um, you know, looking back at it, don't, believe me, there's been many a low, and, and for for – for a good portion of it, it's just like, why am I doing this? But at the same time, I, I it circles back around and I find that motivation again and mm -hmm. I just know if I stick with it. I have this skill set. I've done it before. It's not like I haven't done this before. Right. When I was given money with my last company to just go out and do, and we did. And oh, we yeah. did amazing stuff. You killed stuff. it. You killed yeah. it. And so it's just a matter of doing this. But now the ideas, I'm so glad that I didn't give them my ideas. And by the time they, those ideas were up for review, I just didn't. I didn't allow them to have access to right. it because now I, I can do it. I can go do it on my own. Right. I just need to get that financing and then I'm off to the races. Get so. that money. So Best in Boxing is doing well. Yes. We are so excited to see where GSS goes. And coming up, we're getting punch drunk. We've got Diego Magdaleno in the house. Right now it is two fuego in here. We have Diego <laughs> Magdaleno joining us. Thank you for coming on in. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're our inaugural guest. I yes, love that. I know that. I, when I heard the news of that, I was ecstatic and I was happy about that. I'm the first. So what's better, being the first guest or winning a really big fight? Uh, I think both because uh, <laughs> in broadcasting, it is, it's something I've always been look, you know, looked into. Mm -hmm. So something like that is is quite unique. Hey, maybe I could use a co-host sometime. Right, so. yes, I'm always available. <laughs> All right, so that's maybe in the future a little right. bit because you do have a fight coming up. Yes. But first, I want to rewind and go to the past. Right. What was little Diego like? Little D Diego was uh, a crazy little energetic fighter. <laughs> Um, I'm still the same person, mm -hmm. but uh, I had no direction as, mm -hmm. as a kid. You know, I, I was just running. I was hostile. I was getting into fights, getting into trouble. Like a lot of, a, a lot of you know, young fighters, yeah, right? they get out there and, and they just have so much energy. They, can't, they don't know how to express it mm -hmm. and get it out there. So did you start fighting to learn how to fight so that you could fight better in school? Or you just needed somewhere to get all that energy going? It was partially that and also, you know, b being a Mexican, um, you really don't have much to choose from. You have either <laughs> soccer <laughs> or you have boxing, right. you know, and I was say I was uh, named after the famous uh, Diego Armando Maradona. Ooh. Armando is my middle name. Really? Yes. So um, <laughs> my dad, you know, gave me the name uh, Diego Armando Magdaleno. Mm. So it's very similar. He thought his wishes were for uh, me to play soccer. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> did you I, try? I turned out. I did try a little bit. I just couldn't do Not it. Not your thing. No, it's, I'm a one man team sort of thing like I want to get in there and be responsible right. for my actions I can just imagine someone flops on you and you're like get up yeah get up. <laughs> they're like you know maybe he's better in boxing yeah I need to just be on my own so I can you know take credit and you know be responsible for like I said my actions so what was it like getting in the ring the first time or having a trainer and and it kind of gets a little bit more structured where you're not just out there throwing punches at the flagpole well you're really training and learning yeah, I started in East LA uh, the Brooklyn boxing gym mm -hmm. that's where I started you know that's where you know the famous De La Hoya was uh, you know oh, yeah. in that gym as well um, I got inspired by him when he went to the Olympics 
Um, at that time, you know, the, the heavyweights, Mike Tyson was ruling the game. Um, <laughs> a year later, I moved to Vegas with my family and I started going to the boxing glove, oh, Golden Gloves Boxing mm -hmm. Gym, where it was the home of Mike Tyson. So I, that's where I got, you know, my taste of, of like the real pros right. and, and, and what that was about. And he was just an exciting person going in there, knocking down these 500 pound heavy bags. <laughs> know. You know, he was a beast. And um, I got my love for the sport when I came to box, like, found it in Vegas. That's interesting because you think, you know, a little kid in Detroit playing basketball, he's looking up to LeBron James, but you never actually get to see him. You got to see your yes. idol all the time. Oh, he pulled up in uh, Lamborghinis and Porsches and <laughs> yeah, so I saw a lot. I was, was exposed to a lot. Was this pre-face tattoo? Oh, uh, yes it was. Yes <laughs> okay. it was. Yes. No tigers then? No, no, no. <laughs> but um, he was a monster. I was inspired by Mike mm -hmm. Tyson and uh, I've had the pleasure to see him in his show, go to his fights, meet him in the gym. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a good cool. feeling. Now, I, I love your energy. So I know I would want to hang out at like a family reunion or something oh, yeah. with you, but I also know don't mess with anybody in your family because there's a lot of fighters in oh, your family. Yes. You're not the only one. Oh, yes, I'm not the only one. <laughs> My brother, Jesse, world champion, uh, mm -hmm. Jesse Magdaleno. We have a younger brother, Marco Magdaleno, too, who's been in the ring and, you know, he's uh, undefeated as a pro, too. Mm -hmm. um, but we all fell in love with the sport. And it's uh, being involved in boxing, you become, you know, it becomes a family with the people outside yes. of the sport, too. So it's, we've been growing together and just enjoying it. So who would win out of your brothers in a fight? Because I can imagine that you guys... It would be a brawl. Love. It would be a brawl. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, Jesse and Marco, I'm sure, would try to team up on me like oh, they really? always have. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. So you're the middle kid. <laughs> no, I'm the oldest. Oh, you're the oldest. I'm the oldest. It's me, then it's Jesse, and then it's Marco. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. well, that makes sense, mm -hmm. hanging up on the older brother. Right on. All right, so let's talk a little <laughs> bit about career. Yes. So you, did, you left top rank in 2015, but recently mm -hmm. signed with Cancun Boxing about yes. two years ago uh -huh. or so. So we're, we're still going. We are still going. Um, there's a lot of drive. You know, Diego's been healthy his whole career. Mm -hmm. Never did. You know, fell in, I grew up in Vegas where a lot of people are exposed to a lot of things. And I think for me, and it benefited me. Yeah. It was there. It was available. It was offered. And, you know, I, 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 st I stood true to myself. You're talking about drugs? I'm, I'm talking about everything okay. that, that <laughs> Vegas has to offer, the good and the bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I'm just fortunate to have the good people around me. Yeah. You know, my family's very humble and very, very... Uh, uh, they've always been, you know, guiding me. So you, you always know. had the eye I've and the always pride. had, yes. W winning was always, and w not only winning, but, you know, insp uh, being an inspiration to my mm -hmm. younger brothers. Right. You know, being the older one, I wanted to set the example. So that was one thing that always kept me in, in, in focus. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, you know, like I said, you're, you're about, you're coming up on your 33rd birthday, you said. Yes. So, you know, you're no spring chicken, but no. you're still yes. out there. You're still doing it, and you're still, you know, Putting the fear of God into people. <laughs> I am. And speaking of, uh, you know, the fear of, you know, my opponents. Right. Uh, so I'm, I w was scheduled to fight on the 24th in okay. Indio at Fantasy Springs Casi uh, okay. Casino, um, Indio, California, where, you know, it's no, it's no news to me because I've trained there for a majority okay. part of my uh professional okay. career with Joel Diaz who mm. is you know a great friend of mine uh, at the time my coach when I was working with them uh, we were just unbeatable together yeah and we did gr great things we won I won the WBO international bout with them mm -hmm. so you know we, we went and fought in England for a world title um, we so I have a lot of good memories over there right. so um, long story short golden boy gave me an opportunity to fight on their card for the NABF title in my, my weight class. So I was looking forward to that. Yeah. They had a, a, a tough, young, rugged uh, kid by the name of Genaro Gomez, mm -hmm. you know, to, to face. And he's a prospect. El Conde. Yes. And he's a prospect and someone, you know, very durable mm -hmm. and, and always ready to go to war. Right, yeah. So um, what I did is um, I got in tune. I got ready and got ready for this fight. And... It was just a couple few a few days ago where mm -hmm. they reached out to me and said that you know Hanato is you know having some issues and you know he's not going to be able to fight. So you're fighting so, somebody else? Um, they said they were going to try to replace the opponent, but okay. there's no guarantees. Um, on behalf of this was supposed to be a title fight, right? Yeah. So it's hard to just find a replacement that that last mm -hmm. minute. So I understand and to. Um, Golden Boy. This is like breaking yes, news. Yes, it is. <laughs> to Golden news Boy, right here on the I, yeah, I podcast. appreciate and I want to talk to um, Robert mm -hmm. 
personally who saw me in Vegas not too long ago and was like, hey, get ready. We have something in store for you. So I want to... I, Thank you personally for giving me the opportunity to get back in the ring and for a, a, a title shot that uh, you fought so hard for, for, for me to get in front of. So we're waiting kind of for the dust to settle a little bit yes. and then hopefully a title fight, a new one's coming up. Right, hopefully. So okay. it, in boxing, it's crazy that way. It, it, from one day to another, things can change. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. well, when, when you step into the ring, for people like me who, you know, I think I've been in one little fight and mm -hmm. it was like a girl fight where it was just like this. Like, what is it that that switches in your mind or is there a switch i mean do you see it as a sport or do there, you get in the ring and then it's all there's like, a big no difference rules. because in in the ring i am someone else right outside of the ring i'm completely cool i'm relaxed i'm just you know yeah just being myself i think in the ring i can be that other person i can mm -hmm. be the hulk if i wanted to yeah. and and just let the extreme out gotcha but um that's what boxing does for me. Mm -hmm. Boxing saved my life. It's given me so much to look forward to. And, you know, boxing is, is in me forever. So with that, I want to share that I did team up with uh, a few very special friends. Okay. Team title. Doug, Doug, thank you for everything you've done. I've teamed up with my boxing oh my coach, Ismael Salas. Yes, and we've teamed <laughs> up on a boxing gym here in town. Nice. Yes, it's at it's inside the City Athletic Club off West Sahara. Is this more breaking news? Yes, it is. More breaking news. I love this. 80 West Sahara. We are upstairs on the second floor where I do private classes. Really? And we are, yes, and we are training professionals. So this month alone, uh, well, the, the, the future month in, uh -huh. in November, okay. we have a total of six guys fighting. Okay, so you have to be a professional or yes. at least wanting to be a professional? Um, You don't have to be. Okay. I, I trained everybody from, you know. What, what if I just want to clean are, up my hook? Yes, if you want to clean up, you want to <laughs> sharpen up, you want to take a class, yes, uh, the classes are available. Oh, that is so but exciting. right now we have a team of like six professional fighters all fighting in the month of, uh, of November. Okay. So coach um, insisted that I get in there and help him out as an assistant coach because mm -hmm. he needs my help so much right. that he knows he knows me and he knows my ability as a boxing coach. That's Not exciting. only as a fighter, as a coach too. And he trusts in my, my uh, you know, my presence being there. So I've been helping him out as an assistant coach, which is a new a new a new opening for me yeah it's a new door that i'm knocking on yeah it's a little different you've had yes. your coaches and you know right. what worked for you but you're kind of trying to switch that into seeing mm -hmm. if it you could go on yes. the other side and me training alongside you know manny robles you know who has the uh, the heavyweight champion of the world right mm -hmm. now he's he's created so many but you know i build relationships with him i build relationships like with my best friend uh, uh joel diaz mm -hmm. with ismael salas who these guys are they've been in the game so long right. and i've been keeping a close eye to them and learning everything i can just like a sponge for this day i guess mm -hmm. because now i get to put it to use that's cool. You've learned so much. Oh, yes. And you you still know so much. Uh -huh. What is it about you in the ring that makes you a tough opponent? Um, I'm crafty. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll get in there. I, I won't do the same things twice. I give a lot of movement. I get, It's hard to adapt to my style. Mm -hmm. Being a southpaw, not only that, mm -hmm. but uh, just being able to switch. I can switch and I can fight both ways. Um, I'm just very, very not dimensional. Mm -hmm. That's always been a good, a favorite thing. To, Do you go me. into a fight having a specific idea? Like you say, this is how I usually win. Or is it different with each opponent? It's different with each mm -hmm. opponent. You know, you have to go in there. You have to kind of study your opponent and see what they do the most of. Right. That's their weakness. Gotcha. Um, but... Uh, one thing that I do stay true to is, you know, is keeping focus. Mm -hmm. uh, know what your, your, your plan is and know your your plan B. Right. Because if you don't know how to adapt in the ring, you're gonna come into right. some big problems. I've heard boxers say that there's a plan until you get hit the first time. Is that right. true? It's very <laughs> true. Because then what do you do after that? Right. You know what I mean? When 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 all hell goes 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 south. Yeah. And I've been there many times. That's your you know? mental game though, yes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's how strong you are mentally because if you go down, um, you have to get up. And yeah. after you get up you have to continue fighting. Right. And that's a choice that every fighter has to make. Whether they want to continue mm -hmm. or whether they don't. My last fight against a very rugged uh, Teofimo Lopez, mm -hmm. I went down three times in that fight and they didn't count me out. Yeah. I kept continuing, I kept continuing the fight. And it was a great fight because after that fight, there were so many people who were like, hey, you're an inspiration to me. Oh, good. You, you, kept, you got up and you continued fighting. Um, it, the fight didn't go your way, but 
Um, yes, you inspired me. So that was a good thing for me. I felt like I won the fans in that fight for sure. I was going to say, does it make you feel a little bit better? I mean, obviously no one likes to lose a fight. No, but when all. you hear that, you're yes. like, you know what? I won a little bit. You know, oh, as yes. cheesy as that sounds, uh -huh. you're like, I am a winner. Yes, yes. When it comes uh, to life I can, lessons. I can walk around and I can hold my head up high. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that, you know, that I got from that fight. Right. And I was actually mm -hmm. talking to Armando off camera a little bit before this, that we were saying, you know, maybe 26 is like peak physical, mm -hmm. but really like in your 30s that's where the mental yes. that's where your peak mental mm -hmm. is and that goes to show that your experience yes. boxing getting back up and the mental strength Mature. and being able to focus so you yes. don't let it all go south right you know you can bring it back and focus mentally and that is what um you know coming at your age 32 33 that can say you know what these young kids mm -hmm. don't have that right right mm -hmm. and so we just yeah and you know golden boy just set me up with a young kid who was you know eager to take on an older guy but right. i guess he thought twice about it because <laughs> uh he decided right. to pull out yeah yeah um i don't know what his excuse was maybe he, he bruises his pinky but i've got into fights with my experience mm -hmm. um where i've had broken hands before and fought yeah. and fought that way mm -hmm. It, it, the mind is very, it's incredible. It's different kind of strength. It, yes, it's a very different, mm -hmm. you can't teach that. Yeah. But how are you going to teach it then if you're going to be coaching? It's something you're going to have to talk to uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the fighter about. Every fighter is different, mm -hmm. so there's a different approach of how you talk True. to them. Boxing is psychology. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Anyone can be hold a towel, hold, maybe you know, give you some water, call themselves a coach. Mm -hmm. But coaching goes far past that. Yeah. It goes to uh, getting to know the fighter getting to know how he reacts and how you can talk to each fighter because you can't talk to every fighter the same way because you're right there's different it doesn't matter what sport you're in there's always that athlete where it has the one thing you can't yeah. teach you can't mm -hmm. teach heart no you can't teach not at all fearlessness mm -hmm. you know so if you've got a fighter that can do that and has those things already yeah. bring oh, them yeah. on anybody yeah so yeah you, you, there's an approach to every every which way to to get through to a fighter some fighters you have to slap them other mm -hmm. fighters, you have to, you know, pick them up and tell them, hey, you know, you're doing this or be a little more yeah. methodical. Right. Yeah. Come Some up. Tell them yes. Try it out. Just let them go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, what's one thing that we don't know about you? That it could the, be anything. Okay. Well, um, a lot of people don't know that uh, I have my real estate license. Oh, really? Yes. I'm a practicing realtor, and uh, I have a good boy job. yes. On <laughs> the 28th, my birthday this year, I will be closing on a property. Really? Yes, I will. Yes. That's October 28th. Yes, October 28th. Well, happy early so, birthday yeah. and congratulations <laughs> on your new house. That is cool. Well, it's not for me, but for a client of mine. Yes, house. yes. For a client. Yes, for a client. Yes, wow. and she's very, very happy. That is exciting. All right. Yes. Now. I'm going to make you tell this story on the air here. <laughs> Uh-oh. How did you end up as a ring girl? Oh. <laughs> what? There was fights at <laughs> the Palms Casino. Okay. And um, one of the fights happened to be a female bout. Okay. So there were so many females there, and a lot of the ring girls I knew. Mm -hmm. um, but they offered, and they brought it up, you know, that there's a ring there's dude, a girl there's guy. yeah there's a ring you guy mean, here ring available <laughs> and i was looking around like who like who is that <laughs> and they're like look we have a surprise for you take that card get in there you're not wearing heels or anything but yeah show a little skin gotcha. did you, were you shirtless? <laughs> so they were making me pull off my shirt yeah and i did the whole walk Chip and, and i kind of strutted it? a little bit and uh, yeah oh. i got my chip and dales on my magic mic and i, I did that. the thing and you know what i, I got that. i got i got um i got some some hoorahs instead of the booze so hey there yeah that was really good for my Maybe ego you can teach me a thing or two about how to be sexy out there totally different mindset in the ring as a ring dude yeah, than yeah. Uh, as a boxer where is the coolest place that you have fought i know being a boxer you guys get to go all over the place yes so two and they were both my title fights okay. fought for two world titles my first one was in uh china oh wow and i went to go visit um hong kong mm -hmm. and that i thought was amazing i fought in um in the UK also, mm -hmm. uh, Manchester, England was crazy because of the fans there, the boxing fans, really? and they were totally against me. But the energy that I was having while, you know, I've never been on 
the B side where they were against me. Mm -hmm. But that time was just a whole different fire. It was a whole different vibe, you know. There, yes, yeah. yes, and it did it did fuel me, you know. But um, yeah, boxing's done uh, taking me a lot of places. I've I've traveled, you know, to Canada, to Mexico, all over the United States. But overseas was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was an experience, and it was it was I enjoyed it because I was able to bring my mom and dad with me. Oh wow! Yes, that's exciting. Yes, so they were able to see something new. Well, they were the only ones cheering for you yes, in that whole were. arena. But yes. <laughs> Do you ever hear people? Do you hear people? I, like, can you hear growing them up, you um, being you? in, in, in uh, it's very selective hearing when mm -hmm. you get in there. There's only certain people that get through to me. My mother's whistle is one of them. Oh. My dad's, um, um, what is it? His dale, dale. My, okay. That's my dad. He's like, dale, dale. That's uh, one thing that I grew up with it, with my dad in the gym while I was sparring as a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. So that still, he uses the same uh, lingo with me. So those things kind of just set triggers. Um, my coaches, of course, I always, I can always, you know, tune them in. But, uh, but other than that, it's just a roar. Yeah. Yeah. And I like it. Mm -hmm. Feeds you. Oh, yes. The energy. Fighting here in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Is Vegas the best Great place to fight? Great energy here in Vegas. Yes. Okay. Yep. Well, you mentioned some places that you fought, Hong Kong and London or in Manchester, you said. Right. You got a lot of big fights coming up, One, some in Saudi Arabia, too, so let's bring Armando back in. I know that. chat a little bit more about those bouts coming up. All right, welcome back, Armando. So, guys, let's first talk about December 2nd. We have Andy Ruiz Jr. and Joshua Anthony, and uh, Joshua wants his belts back. <laughs> oh, no, he definitely wants them back. But they're fighting in Saudi Arabia. Earlier this year, it was Madison Square Garden. Correct. So yep. now we're taking it all the way ac across the pond, across the Middle East. Like, we're going to Saudi Arabia. How do you feel about that, Diego? Um, I feel like boxing should be where, where boxing is derived from. Uh, the, the capital of boxing should be here. It is here in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, that fight should be happening somewhere here in the States for sure. Why yes. is that? Just because of geography because, and travel? Or? Because uh, this is the home. Fans, this is the home where the belt is located now. Okay. He, Andy Ruiz, a good friend of mine too. Mm -hmm. uh, I've trained with him in many gyms here in, in Vegas um, and along California, alongside his 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 coach Manny Robles. Yeah, who's, oh yeah. Who's a great friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Also trained my younger brother Jesse Magdalena. That's right. Um, well, he captured his title. Um, but. Uh, I feel like that belt should be taking place where the champion holds it. Yeah. You know, he had to go across overseas to fight, and uh, he did. He went overseas. He kicked butt. He brought it back home. So bring it back home. I, I think. Um, I, I think that the the heart of boxing is. I mean, obviously England is a major hot hotbed, mm -hmm. and and Cal and California specifically hotbed. Vegas the is where it happens. I mean, this is if you want to. Be in the fight game. You want to fight in this city. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a fight of that caliber, it it should be in Las Vegas. I mean, they don't want to have it here because it puts Joshua at a disadvantage in terms of, uh, I would say, the the judging and you know that's that's the fan talking, right? Okay. Um, but at the same time, it's like I could see the argument for England mm -hmm. because of the contract, right? But. Saudi Arabia, that just came out of nowhere. Yeah, but $40 million <laughs> didn't come out of nowhere, yeah. so that's how much they're paying for this bout. So, I yeah. mean, I guess money talks? Oh, it definitely yeah. does. In the yeah. sport of boxing, it, it, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a business. Yeah. And I think the fans get upset with uh, it being such a big draw and not being you know, favored where the fans are going to be looking forward to seeing that well, what are the fans like in saudi arabia have you fought in the middle east have you been there i've never fought in uh, I, I mean if you go according to their their laws they're i mean they're obviously way more conservative than mm -hmm. than um than u.s a u.s venue would be um i'm not sure i i know that it was a big deal when they opened their first movie theater there and mm -hmm. uh one of the royal family uh, the i think it was the daughter of the royal family went to the uh to the movies and that was like a big thing. So that was a progressive step for them. So right. who knows how they're going to handle boxing where it's, you know, it's here in the States, it's men and women. It's a, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun night out with a, with a, with a date. And right. I don't know how it would be treated over there. It'd be uh, a lot. Being treated, I think, like uh, someone coming to Vegas to go watch a, a show on the strip. Oh, you think it's more of a spectacle I than a sport? I think so. Yes, it is. Interesting. Over there. Oh, yeah. But so that, obviously then you're talking about the caliber 
of this fight. It's almost kind of a maybe a slap in the face. It is for me. Mm -hmm. uh, for real speaking boxing for fan? a fan. I'm mm -hmm. a boxing fan right now, and I'm speaking as a boxing fan. And that's something that's memorable. Yeah. It goes down in history. Um, Andy Ruiz, the, you know, the youngest, uh, you know, Mexican American uh, heavyweight champion mm -hmm. of the world, has never been uh, another one like it. Yeah. So um, that I think alone stands for itself. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, I would question how many Americans and, and Brits would go over there to, to watch it. So I figured the majority of the audience would be from Saudi Arabia. So it's just all those people who followed them for their entire careers and, and would love to see that maybe may not have the money to go see it. You know, right. at least here in Vegas, they have all the sports books or they have the private showings with all the videos everywhere throughout the strip or MGM properties. You can watch it. You can still feel like you're a part of it, but if it's on the other side of the world. Yeah, if someone's not used to it, they don't really know and they don't respect it as a yeah. sport. I'm just contemplating, I don't know, but it, they don't have the roar that you were talking right. about. The roar is not there, whether it's for or against you, because mm -hmm. they're just, if, they, if they are looking at it, as you suggested, like a, like a show right. instead of a sport, mm -hmm. then you know, with professional athletes, and that's a different kind of feeling when you walk in there. But could there be the argument that we are helping boxing to be more international. Uh, the only the only thing that's being helped is is Eddie Hearn's <laughs> pocketbook. That's it. Yes. Forty million dollars is a lot yes, of money. And that was as soon as he saw that. A lot of people don't realize that in the rematch, mm -hmm. the fighters want more money, and promoters make less money in the rematch mm -hmm. because they sell less tickets. Because it, it it seems like you would sell more tickets on the rematch mm -hmm. or 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 sell more pay per views, but historically, pay per views sale drop off right. on the second on the rematch. So so the promoters are making less money, but the fighters are making more money. So their right. margins are tiny. So when he saw forty million, who's he? Tom Hearns? Uh, no, no, um, Eddie Hearns. Eddie Hearns. Eddie Hearns. Eddie. Hearns, Eddie. Um, when Eddie saw. When Eddie saw forty million, he jumped at it because he all of a sudden he's covering his costs yes. and and there's a lot of money to be made. Yeah, I can't blame him. Let's I'd not jump forget at 40 too. Well, uh, fight week is is it's the whole week of fighting. Yeah. It's when every broadcaster, every sports fan, everyone gets together and they 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 come to the grand arrival. Yeah. They they come to you know it's it's fight week. There's a lot going on during fight week. The Wayne's alone. Yeah, is is a is a is an uproar. People look forward to it's just an event. The way. It's, it's an it's, event. It's in a whole. It's a whole week. And it's a live event, and that's what the real boxing fans are coming for. We've got um, <laughs> Canelo Alvarez on November second against yes. Sergey Kovalev. Kovalev. Yes. Okay, so what are we expecting there? I mean, Canelo's going up two weight classes. How tough is that? First of all, it, it's <laughs> it's tough. It's very tough because you're not only giving up size uh, in every aspect, reach. Uh, strength, uh, um, just uh, you know, every advantage going up two weight classes is just. Is he good it's, enough? It's it's crazy. Canelo I know he's is good. Is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he's is great. He's in his prime. Um, he's in, he's his, in prime. his prime, definitely. I think he can hold his own. Sergey Kovalev is a strong fighter, but I think he's also on his way up. Yeah. No, it's a good. It's a good it's fight. A good, yeah. It's, yeah. But it's it's. Uh, I mean, a lot a lot of people are picking Canelo. It's a risky fight because Kovalev is one of the only people in boxing right now who has consistently knocked guys down with his with his jab. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he he's just he naturally has power in that jab, so he doesn't even have to get to the power punch because Canelo can 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 miss the second punch coming at him. But the first one, the jab, you're not always going to miss that. I mean, and, and Kovalev's knocked down some big boys with that shot. And, and Canelo is small compared. So that's the only concern is if Kovalev only needs to catch him once. Right. And I think that jab, which really stuns and has knocked out yeah. bigger men, would do a lot of damage to Canelo, who's much, much smaller just physically. I don't care how much weight he puts on. He's still just physically, his stature is smaller. Well, you right. said the only concern is the jab, but he's got knockout potential in both hands. Yeah. So it doesn't oh, yeah, if, if you catches get past him. the jab, yeah. you've really got to make sure you, you miss Yeah, he has hand. to be on his defensive <laughs> game. He looked really good in mm -hmm. his last fight, Canelo, with his movement. Um, that's why I say he's in his prime because that's, that's the best I've ever seen him in terms of his defense. And so maybe he feels like now's the time, like he's mastered what he needed to master in order to beat a Kovalev right. so Kovalev doesn't touch him. Mm -hmm. Because if he goes to the body on Kovalev, because he's a taller guy, mm -hmm. he has that, he can get underneath and, and hurt him to the body. He could drop him. He could. Is it ego that makes you want to go up two weight classes? <laughs> I, I mean, what is it that in makes... In boxing? Yeah. Uh, the same thing we talked about earlier. It's money. Right. <laughs> 
you know, they're it's a big fight, a big yeah. fight, big money. And Canelo is just the guy that everyone wants to pay to see. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the moneymaker in boxing yes, right now. He is. Gotcha. He's he's the number one. He's the number one prize fighter in boxing. Then again, I mean, I I love his 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 boxing. Yeah. He has good head movement. He stays inside. He yeah. knows how to work inside. The inside is his thing. He he slip shots. It, it's beautiful what he yeah. does in the ring. Yeah, t- the a few rounds in the last Triple G fight and and definitely Jacobs fight. Um, he showcased on another level. Yes, he did. On another yes, level, did. Jacobs didn't had no clue what he was doing in there against him, and he just couldn't hit him. And by he was he was tired by the end because he was just hitting air all night. Right. It was crazy. It was such a from a defensive standpoint, Canelo was. I've never seen him better. Canelo being his size, you know, he's not, he's not, you know, much taller than I am probably, yeah. but the way he can slip a shot, stay in the pocket and mm-hmm. land something is just amazing. Yeah. That's talent right there. That's something that all, most fighters, you know, w- w- want to do. Yeah. I, I practice that myself. Staying very, very close where you can still catch the guy on the outside. Yeah. So you've got Kovalev offense yes. versus Canelo Alvarez defense. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight. Oh, yeah. All right, interesting matchup coming up as well. We have Oscar Valdez with Andres Gutierrez. And when I mentioned it to you, your eyes lit up. Tell us why. <laughs> Andres Gutierrez is a stable mate of mine, and I am working as an assistant coach for this fight myself. That's cool. Knowing, uh, knowing that he's fighting Oscar Valdez, who's you know been a, a, a sparring partner for, for my brother Jesse mm-hmm. yeah. and, and a close friend of all of ours you right. know, growing up, uh, in, in the professional world, it, it's just a, uh, it's an amazing fight. I get to work with uh, someone on the outside of the ring now, across yeah. from him. Right. So I'll be in the opposite corner against, you know, a, a, a good friend of mine. Well, interesting. That's it's true. only going ten rounds. So right. why would they pick this fight? Why would they put these two together? Because Armando, you were saying this is kind of a mistake. I, I don't know if it's a mistake. It's it's more of it's telling that that. You know, they the top rank controls one of the belts as well as they have access to the second one because Zamfer has it and they have a good relationship. So mm-hmm. um, they could easily get him into a fight right. with it with a cha- for a championship fight. Right. So why, when the pattern has always been your guys coming out of going up in a division, he's a champion, he comes into a, into a belt fight. Right. That's that what they've always done, and it's telling that they're not doing that with him. Mm-hmm. Why? What what's so is you're he not? Oscar Valdez should be going for a belt. He, he, that's the that's normal. Right. That's I feel normal. that's pattern. norm. That's right. the pattern, mm-hmm. and the fact that he's fighting a ten rounder, it makes me question what's what's the game plan for him. Is he are they not feeling confident about him taking on like going for a belt right away, and they want to see how he handles the weight? I mean, that's they do. If you look at Lomachenko, if you look at Pacquiao, you I mean look at all the top guys, they don't do that. No. Right. You 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 go from championship belt to championship belt, and that's all you do. But maybe Valdez are looking to pad his record a little bit but you're saying Gutierrez can take him oh yes I am aware that you know they <laughs> top rank has always done a, a great job especially with the, you know the matchmaking oh, they, yeah. they get so they good make at it. sure that you know it's not an un, un, unfair fight or it's not uneven they do they put on great shows that's mm-hmm. what yeah. they're known for that's what I love about top rank and uh they found a very very rugged um, a crafty kid, mm-hmm. you know, to, to face Oscar Valdez. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone thinks just because they don't know who yeah. Diet is, um, and his name is not out there, um, that he's gonna be an easy stepping stone, yeah. they have one coming for him, yeah. Especially Valdez, should he, he, I, and I expect because knowing him that he's gonna be on his A game, he's right. gonna bring you know everything that he brings. Um, Gutierrez is just a man on fire right now. And uh, it should be no fun. No one knows <laughs> who he is, and I think he's going to come out surprising people after yeah. this fight with uh, Valdez. So don't take him lightly. They're going to know who he is. Yeah, yeah don't yes. take him lightly because he say, could actually. What you're saying is yes. don't sleep on your boy. Don't sleep Cause... on him. <laughs> yeah. Find out what casino yeah. is taking that line. And... <laughs> I, I like this inside info. Yeah. All right, we got to go back to one of your buddies. <laughs> Teofimo Lopez Jr. He's right. um, uh, Richard Comey coming up. Mm-hmm. What do we think about that fight? Um, that fight should be interesting. He's uh, he's definitely got in the ring, and you know he was asking uh, Comey for for the fight, and Comey was like, "Hey, you know, I don't feel that you're ready." Or but they made the fight happen. Yeah. You know, he got in there, he did his thing, he he got the W's, and now he's going up for a challenge. Yeah, top top rank controls the belt, mm-hmm. so uh, Comey's a good fighter, but. Teofimo is better. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tio, you could, again, going back to the pattern and knowing top ranks pattern, um, 
Comey is one of those guys that was put in a belt position so that he could fight a better guy in the same division that they control. Mm -hmm. Like they were able to get him the belt, get him a couple wins, build him up into a champion, knowing that, hey, we got Teofimo coming up and he can take him. Right. Um, I, it's going to be a good fight, but I mean, Teofimo is just a better fighter than he's just a better fighter than him. And so um, I think Teofimo wins it pretty pretty substantially i mean he has a uh Comey has a jaw on him and he can i mean he can take a punch mm -hmm. um but i think he's he has the tendency to want to brawl and yeah. if you brawl teofimo you're not he's not gonna win he's right. got way too he's got way, i mean you can attest to that yeah he looks like he hits hard mm -hmm. how how hard does he hit um i think a lot of that uh is a lot of Teofimo is very crafty. It's the punch you don't see that really gets you down. There. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it, if it's he's like the, the the most powerful puncher that I've got faced in the ring. Mm -hmm. But um, it's the angle and it's the you know the accuracy that, yeah. that he carries. That's it. Accuracy. There, he's, he's very accurate. Yeah. So. Because you were saying Comey should have gone after Lomachenko first. Well, if you look at the pattern, so they want Lomachenko. Uh, to unify the division. Uh -huh. So why not just let him unify the division with Comey and then go back, you know, because he doesn't want to stay at that weight. He wants to go back down. Uh -huh. And so that opens it up for yes, Teofimo, and then Teofimo can just run the tables with, with open, you know, open belts. Um, it's just, it's interesting that they're not doing that. Are they, do, they, do they want to put a Teofimo, Teofimo in with Lomachenko mm -hmm. to unify it as a big money? And, and that's again goes against the yeah, pattern. Yeah, they're doing right. something. Uh -huh. They're doing something new, and right. and that makes me question: Is it ESPN that's putting a little pressure? Hey, we need better fight. We need. Be mm. They put on good fights, like competitive fights on right. the lower as they're building guys. But when it comes to the top guys, I mean, they they're short on fighters. They're yes. short on big fights. So they maybe they're being pressured to hey, we need to make money fights now. We need to make we need to draw some big numbers. So a Tiafimo against a Loma would be big. That right. would be a big fight. Two big names. Yeah, right two big yeah. names and they both have the belt and so they're going to sacrifice one of them i mean mm -hmm. tiafimo if he loses to lomachenko he's still got a career ahead of him right. so there's there and they could build they could make each other who knows maybe it could be fight of the year and then we see two more fights from them three total so you're saying it's like the business it's of a business the sport. oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's totally maybe business pressuring a little bit subscriptions we need more of this there's so much money on the lines mm -hmm. with these subscription services right now that that um that the all of them are going through the pressures of hey we got to put better fights on and that's that's all great for us where does mikey garcia come in then um, well, see, that's the thing is if, if they're not going to put Tiafimo or if they're not going to put Comey up against uh, Lomachenko, then mm. that lets me think that they may be working on the Garcia fight. Because uh, Robert said that they want that fight. Yes. Like they're 100% they're in. They just mm -hmm. got to work on the details. So that makes me think that quietly they're behind the scenes working on that fight. And may, that'll be the next big fight because they need it. And I guarantee you whatever Mikey wants, they're going to. They're going to give As a fighter, do you know all the stuff behind the scenes? Like, do you know they're going after this fight and that didn't go through? They go after this fight you that didn't go through? You have an or, idea, of course, yeah. Or do Especially, they just come to you and say, hey, we got this fight? No, there's always an idea. There's mm -hmm. always an idea of what a fighter wants and where the big names are. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to always put the two big names in there and make it a, a make it a, an event. And yeah. that's where the money is at when you make it an event. Yeah, and they're they're very good at that, and they may have to push up the course uh, of of their normal plans, because PBC, if you look at them, I mean, for years they were putting in garbage fights to build their fighters, and mm -hmm. we had to we had to watch through it, mm -hmm. even though we wanted to see better fights. Well, they finally matured their fighters enough to where now they're fighting against right. each other. Plus, they were able to pick up Pacquiao, which was a major coup, mm -hmm. um, and so. We're getting better fights or bigger fights from PBC because they they're just in uh, further along in the cycle of building fighters than Top Rank is they right now. Already. Yeah, yes. and so Top Rank's trying to catch up by pushing their fighters a little. That's what it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. I could be could be wrong. All right, and also November seventh, mm -hmm. we've got Noe Inoue versus Nonito. I love that Nonito mm -hmm. Doer. So Donaire. what are you guys thinking there? Well, that Donair is, is is a big name because mm -hmm. my younger brother Jesse beat him for his world title here in Vegas, oh, the Thomas and Max Center. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yes, um, it, which was a great a great fight. It was a great fight. Um, mm -hmm. I I feel that this is good. You know, Donair is still in there. He's still you know showing the world that he's uh, he's got talent. But in no way, pound for pound. Yes. 
decent. It's a big fight. It's a big, big fight. Yeah, no, I honestly, I mean, I love Nonito, man. Him and his wife are super cool people. I, I really, I really like both of them. And Nonito's just a genuinely really nice guy, um, you know, outside of the boxing ring. I wouldn't want to face him inside the boxing ring. Um, but uh, I really thought he was done mm -hmm. when he left top rank. Yeah. And he has proven me completely wrong because he is not only one, he's looked good doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's definitely earned this shot. Um, to, to, to get back or to, to basic, to unify, um, two belts. The only problem is he's got a, he's got, to me, he's like number two talent wise. He's not, he's not the most famous guy. So people don't put him up as high, but if you've wa I've watched all of his fights, <laughs> that guy's something special. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna move up to his third weight division and he's mm -hmm. under 15 fights. I mean, it's insane how quickly he's moved and how amazing he looks. Yes. I and and there's talk about putting him and and Lomachenko together. That when Lomachenko goes back down, he's willing to come up again. And I'm just like, for a fourth belt, yeah. he's that to me. There, there's no better fight in boxing than those two because I, I, I if you have not seen him fight, <laughs> go watch him fight because yeah. he's absolutely amazing. Yes, yes, he is. He's very, very talented. Yeah. And um, you don't take anyone uh, for granted, even even if. Uh, Donaire is older now, yeah, and he's almost you know aged out of oh, yeah. of mm -hmm. the division now. He's he's out his weight class. Um, they don't have a long career because of the amount of punches thrown in his weight yeah. class. Fast, he is yeah. fast. He <laughs> yeah. is the flash, but mm -hmm. you know they catch up to you. So um, I, I feel that this is a be a, this would be this is a good name for him to have under his record. Yeah, and it and it's uh, to Nonito's strength. He is in a he has knockout power of, of that weight class like you've never seen. Mm -hmm. Like he to me in that division historically, he can he's right up there with the top guys in terms of his power. Like that he has one punch knockout power and that's similar to what Kovala has, right? It's a big neutralizer. So they they're gonna have to be careful because Nonito can drop you in a shot and he his fights have ended just like that mm -hmm. many, many a time. And so he's He's dangerous. It's yes. a dangerous fight, and it's a fun. I can't wait for the fight. <laughs> well, I can't wait for you to fight again too. So we will keep an ear out for oh, yes, that definitely. news coming up. So the breaking news: October twenty fourth, not happening right not now happening. for you yeah. because your opponent pulled out. Uh -huh. And another thing I need to clarify is, y'all, just because he has his real estate license does not mean <laughs> he is done throwing punches. <laughs> our boy Diego here is still ready to go. Thank yeah. you so much for yes. joining us on our very first. GSS podcast, of course, Armando. Definitely. Thank you thank so much you. for being here and thank offering you, all of your insight. And thank you to you for watching and listening.